Hey guys, I'm Brian Bailey and welcome to Basic Obedience Training, The Taming the Wild Way. Following the instructions in the upcoming videos will help you achieve the dog of your dreams. But you'll need training equipment that would help you motivate and gain your dog's attention. And most importantly, influence its behavior. Now the equipment that I'm going to show in this video is all that is needed to complete the entire series of behaviors. I will point out optional equipment at the end of this video, but all of this equipment that you will need can be purchased at shoptamingthewild.com. Now in this video, I will only be demonstrating how to properly size the collars I recommend. Their use, however, will be demonstrated in the videos that follow. Now the first piece of equipment is a really, really essential part of training. For 40 years, I have used this particular collar. So I definitely need you to get it to complete the next series of videos. It is known as a slip collar, slip collar. And the proper sizing of this collar is really important. Now right here next to me is a good old dog that I named Flat Black. Now why? He's got no expression, he's just kind of flat. <laughs> and of course, he's black. So there you go. But on flat black is a slip collar that is sized properly. So I'm gonna turn him here right here and make sure that you understand how this, the length is important. So right here we have about, if you take up all of the slack, you should only have about an inch and a half between the two rings an inch and a half between the two rings. That's all you need. Anything more than that can interfere with the use of your leash and the play of it when you're trying to turn the dog, pull the dog into a set, and so on. So about an inch and a half between the rings. Now these collars come in even sizes, which means sometimes you'll have it a little bit more snug than an inch and a half, and sometimes just a wee bit longer, but it's no big deal it'll still work. Okay, important part of the slip collar is this. How do you put this thing on? Okay, how do you put a slip collar on a dog? First thing first, you have two rings. Simply take the material and lay one of the rings on top of it. That's all you have to do. Just lay a ring on top of the material. Then shove that in the material straight through the ring. And to properly place this on your dog, for those of you who plan on training your dog primarily on your left side, which I highly recommend if you're a right-handed human. Why? Because you want to control your dog with the hand that you hardly use for anything. I use my right hand to shake someone's hand, sign for something, carry something heavy, put a key in a lock. I don't do that with my left hand. So why take up my busy, useful right hand with my left hand that I really don't do much with? That's why we always say, make sure you train your dog on your weak side or the side that you don't use very often. So therefore, it's really important because you'll learn in the upcoming videos how these collars work. So just go with me for right now. So once we make, we got our straight line here and our two rings. Again, lay the ring on top of the material and then just shove one of the ends through, and you can pick either side that you want. Let me just kind of tell you this, because it's kind of funny. The rings don't go through one another. Okay, I always kind of point that out, because I actually had a gentleman accomplish that, but of course he had to use another piece of equipment called a pair of pliers. It wasn't designed for that. So again, lay the ring down on top of the material, shove it right on through. And then for you left side people that you're going to walk your dog and train your dog on your left side, you will want to form the letter P as in pet. See, the line goes up and comes back, straight up and comes back. This direction forms like the number nine. If I was going to draw the number nine, that's exactly how I would do it. The long tail would be toward my right arm. With the letter P, the long tail is toward my left arm. So form the letter P as in pet, and then turn around here flat black. What you'll want to do is face your dog. This is really important. Face your dog. So open the ring, 
face your dog and slide it over the dog's head. Now, as you're putting this on, you'll notice that the ears fold back really easily. But if you decide to take it off, you will need to take your slip collar over one ear, then over the other ear, so it'll be diagonal across the head after you get over one ear, and then over the other ear to pull it off. I always tell people, the ears, there's membranes back here. The ears fold back really easily going this way. They don't fold forward so well. Try it with your own ears. And so many people think, oh my gosh, the collar's too small because I can't get it over my dog's head. If you just simply tuck in one ear, take it over, tuck in the other ear, pull it over, off it will come. Okay guys, so remember, make a P for pet for left side walkers, turn it completely opposite. So again, right here, this would be the number nine. Think about the number nine. If you're going to walk your dog on your right side, Open it, same rule applies, face the dog and slide it over. And then once you do, make sure you check for the proper fit. Should be about an inch and a half between the rings. All right, that's the slip collar. There'll be more on that come up here soon when we talk about using them for our training. But guys, make sure you get a hold of a slip collar. It is vitally important that you have this to complete the rest of the training videos. All right, the next piece of equipment. This is a prong collar. Now, this is not optional for people who own dogs that are about 55 pounds, 60 pounds, and are very strong and very strong-willed. I typically only use a prong for locomotion, for walking, because it's simply a physics problem. When you have two masses in movement, they both want to stay in movement. But here's the deal. I have this 80 pound dog going to my left, I wanna to go to my right. And depending upon my strength and my balance and my coordination, all of those factors come into play. If I have less of that than the dog, then the dog wins, even on a slip collar. So therefore, I use prong collars mostly for locomotion, mostly for walking. So yeah, they, they look ugly, and a lot of people say, oh my gosh, do I have to put that on my dog? You'll find out the reason why we use them coming up. But just go with me again for now, bear with me. Now the biggest thing about a prong collar is that when you put it on your dog, again, like the slip collar, sizing is very important. So many people like the slip collar, put them on too loose, too loose. You don't want that. These are meant to grab the dog and hold on and then release, grab and release, grab and release. They're not meant to barb your dog. So it has to be on very snug. To accomplish that, when you get your slip collar, it comes with a series of teeth. We call them links in this collar. Now what you'll need to do is put it on your dog and adjust it. Uh, some dogs, hey, you might luck out, you don't have to take a darn tooth out one. But many dogs, you have to remove some of the teeth. So that being said, the easy way to do that is just play with it, it pulls right apart, and you can take one out, and there we go. I acted just like a dentist, a prong collar dentist, I just removed the tooth. And then save that tooth, because if you have a young dog, they're probably gonna grow. And next thing you know, the prong collar will be too snug, and you'll be going, I, what? It? What'd I do with that tooth? I wish I had that tooth back. Okay, and then once you've taken out the tooth, then you can now put the prong collar back together. Now I pre-sized this one up for old flat black back here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that tooth right on back in. And then once I do, I'm going to leave it apart. So when you put this on your dog, you will have to take it apart. It's not designed to slide over your dog's head. This is more like a human collar that you would put on and then clasp in the back. But there's two rings on your prong collar. One is a solid ring. The other one is a swivel ring, the swivel ring. This is the ring that you will attach your leash to, not the solid ring. The solid ring is there for safety. So as you take your prong collar apart, again, just play with it. Just, just a little bit of a learning curve there. Just pinch there, pull it apart. Hold one end, just one end at a time. 
Make sure my chains here are not twisted. You don't want to be staring at this twist. You want to make sure that you have a nice little space in between here. And you want to make sure that the swivel ring is on the outside, not on the inside. So now as I have this, you can now grab the other end because everything's good to go. Then you don't have to face your dog on this particular one like you do a slip collar. Just go up to your dog, take the prong collar, think about where you're going to have that swivel ring. If my dog is going to be trained on my left side, then I'm going to want to have the swivel ring parked about where the slip collar is, right here on the right, behind the right ear of the dog, kind of in this quadrant here, not in the middle of the neck, but in this quadrant here, over the right shoulder behind the right ear. And again, now if the dog is going to be trained on my right side, take all of that, turn it around. Right behind the left ear, right over on the left shoulder in that quadrant. So now knowing that in advance, I will go take this underneath my dog's neck, back around, and I'll think about where's that swivel ring? Where is that? And I see it right here. So now I'll take it around and I'll turn flat black so you guys can see. And once I'm here, I will simply attach it like so. And now, there we go. I'm ready to attach my leash. Okay, again, prong collars are a necessary tool for most dogs. May not be for your dog, but most large animals that are very determined are already, they've mastered the art of pulling. You're gonna love it. It's kind of like going from a stick shift to an automatic. So again, prong collars are awesome tools. So get past the way they look. These things work like a champ. And now let's move on to another piece of equipment, a leash. Okay, so if you're watching these, this video and you already have a dog, I guarantee you already have a leash. But here's a couple of things I want you to consider about a leash for training. One, the length. This is a four foot leash. I find that for most people, unless you're really tall and you're training a really small dog, that four feet is ample. Anything more than that is just really a lot of leash and it just gets in your way. It, next thing you know, your dog's paws are over it, so now it's caught up underneath the, the leg of the dog, the front leg there. You trip over it, it just gets in the way. I've been using a four foot leash on just about any size dog for as long as I can remember. So length is important. The other thing you want to take into consideration is the fabric itself. This one's leather. Now, I just prefer leather. You may prefer cloth. You may prefer nylon or cotton. Most important thing is grip. You may like the way that nice shiny nylon leash looks, but what happens when you need to hold on to it? Does it become slippery when wet? Just play with it. You have to grab a leash off the shelf and play with it. But anyone that really, really wants to be an accomplished trainer, really get a great dog, I'm going to highly recommend that you go with leather. I promise you, you will not regret it. Okay, width of the leash, width of the leash. This one is 5 8 inch wide. You'll want to think about that. That really just kind of depends upon how long are your fingers. You don't want it so wide that if you curl your fingers around your leash, your fingers really can't touch the other part of your hand. So if it's so wide, I'm, I'm gripping it like this versus like so. As you see, now all my fingers are touching the other part of my palm. That's really important. You have to have a good grip with your leash. So don't get one that's too wide. Think about grip. So again, this is 5 eighths. I would say go all the way from a half inch to five eighths, I would not go with a one inch wide leash. All right, and then the last thing, check the mechanism at the, that you're going to be attaching to your dog's collar. This is known as the clasp. Uh, this one is aluminum, blackened aluminum. You can get them in stainless steel, you can get them in brass. What's more important than the way it looks or the color that it is, is the mechanism behind it. This is a spring-loaded snap. I let go and you can hear that little click. I'll put it by my microphone. That's really important because why? If I click this on to flat black, I put this on his prong collar. Hear that clip? 
I'll get closer. You want to make sure that that clasp is on securely. Nothing worse than a weak clasp, strong collar, because it all equals dog long gone. So guys, invest in good equipment and any equipment that I recommend that you will find on shoptamingthewild.com is going to be what I personally use and have used for many, many years. All right, so that's it on our leash. The other piece of equipment is a long line. You have to have a long line. This is a tool that we'll be using when we teach stay, when we teach place, when we teach come to me when I call you. Vitally important. So a couple things on long lines. One, length. Think about the length that you want to use. This one's a 15 footer, but we have them in 15 feet, 20 feet, 30 feet, 50. You can even make your own. Uh, at one point in my life when I was doing a lot of uh, dog sport competitions, I had a room in my garage that looked like a fishing village. I had these things 200, 300 feet long, uh, painted in fluorescent orange so I could see it. Uh, but length is important. I would go with no less than about 15 feet. You're going to need to get distance away from your dog to call your dog to you. And of course, you have to get distance away from your dog to train stay. I mean, that's the whole point of it. You're over there, I'm over here entertaining my company. Make sure you check the end like you would a leash, spring-loaded clasp. There we go again, because if I attach this to flat black again, I want to hear that click. I want to make sure my long line is secure. It's not going to come off the dog. Other than that, as far as colors go, sometimes I'll use orange. Uh, this color orange here is not easily seen by dogs. The two colors that they see very well is like a royal blue, I don't like this one, uh, or hunter green and yellow. They don't see this very well, neither do a lot of the mammals other than humans. Again, this is why hunters wear bright orange, because they're not worried about being seen by the deer. They just don't want to be shot by the hunter. So some people use orange because the, the dog has a more difficult time seeing the, the line and then being aware of the fact that they're actually on the line. Okay, so long line, uh, again, you pick the length of it. Uh, you can make them all sorts of lengths. I just want to make sure you got a good clasp on the end and I want to make sure it's not too wide. It feels good in your hands. But guys, most of the time, once you get past the uh, first couple of days of training, this thing's just going to be on the ground. So make sure you can see it and make sure you can get your hands on it so you can use it. All right, so that's it with the long line. Now let's talk about a treat pouch. Hey guys, remember I said training equipment has to gain your dog's attention. Trust me, my slip collar, my prong collar, my, my leashes, my long lines, those are going to gain your dog's attention and we're gonna need that. You gotta have attention if you're gonna learn something new. But let's talk about motivation. Well, here comes a treat pouch. <laughs> Make sure you find a good treat that your dog really enjoys. Now, in this training, you'll find out later, we don't rely solely on treats. This is a reward, which means it's given after you do the behavior. I'm not going to bribe you with it. Only with young puppies do we do what's called luring. But for the most part, treats are given after the behavior. But the most important thing about treats, not only do they have to be really tasty to your dog, hence, kind of like me, you offer me cottage cheese, and I'm telling you what, you're not gonna motivate me to do very much at all. But offer me a nice juicy hamburger, and I'm all over it, baby. I'll learn anything you need me to know. So find something that your dog really, really enjoys. But once you do, it's how do you retrieve the treat that matters? This is my own personal treat pouch. And here's what I love about it. First of all, I can strap it to my waist. I love that because once I put it on right here, bam, now I can sling it low, real low. And right now I've got some audio equipment on, so I'm not going to sl sling it as low as I normally do, but I have long arms. Just, well, that's just me. I don't want to have to reach up here while I'm trying to control a dog to grab a treat. It's easier for me to grab a treat right here. 
So again, I can sling this thing real low by giving myself a little bit more slack here, hang it down low. I love that. I love it. Plus, when I'm training come when called, man, I can move it to the front. Target right here, baby. Come on in here and boom, there's your treat right here. Serves as a nice target. And then when I'm training that dog that walks on my right side, I want to move the treat back to my left side. I don't want to have that hanging right here because for some dogs, that treat, if it's right here, can become counterproductive with training because all they think about is, how do I get that treat out of that bag hanging off that dude's hip versus uh, where am I supposed to be in relation to that dude's hip? So again, on a belt, you can move it all over the place. So that's really important. The other important part of this treat pouch that I love is the fact that it has a magnetic closure. Comes open, shuts. You almost hear it, I'll put it up here. Just like that clasp. Love that, because why I'm training, pop it open, grab treat, done. Now the dog gets to treat, I bend over for what, maybe I'm training down and I don't have all my treats now dumping out of my pouch. But again, I can't take the time to reach over here and go here, get that out here, good dog. And then, okay, let me zip it. Hold on, give me a second here. One more second, it's kind of hung up in all the treats. Guys, you don't want that. You want a nice magnetic closure. And then it comes with a little pouch here in the front. That's a great place to tuck in a couple of poop bags so that you're a really nice dog owner and you clean up after your dog. Put some keys in here, throw a credit card in here if you need to in case you get lost somewhere with your dog while you're training. There's all sorts of things you can do with that. And then there's one last little neat little device here. It's a little carabiner. If you don't want to use the belt, maybe for whatever reason you're wearing a different pair of shorts or something, you can hang this from a belt loop if that's what the pants have, or you can hang it even lower, or you can use it to make the uh, treat pouch more secure to you. So again, guys, I gotta have a treat pouch. Every day I wear a treat pouch when I'm training. Okay, so make sure you get your treat pouch. All right, now we're going to be training behaviors here known as place. Place, you'll learn about that coming up. and You're gonna love it. I wouldn't even own a dog if it couldn't do place. But place requires the animal to stay on a physical device. Now, when we train, I prefer to use a cot. So I'm just going to lay my little mat down there. Why a cot? Because the surface is elevated, requiring the dog to step off. So again, just kind of like a, a preview of coming attractions. Imagine if I told you to stay and you just right here on the floor, just stand right here and I leave you. Well, if you want to leave that spot, all you have to do is just lean forward and start walking and you're gone. But now imagine if I asked you to stand up on a box or stand on a chair. Now, if you're going to leave, what is the first action you must complete? Yeah, you got it. You got to look down and go, okay, I'm getting out of here, but first thing I have to do is safely get down off this box or get down off this chair. That brings a very quick awareness to the dog that you are leaving my spot. So when we train dogs here at Taming the Wild to do this behavior called place, we start all of them on a cot, all of them. So again, we have these cots available, and I'm gonna move right here just to make sure you guys can see it. So now imagine old flat black was on this cot. There we go. And you wanna make sure you, you purchase a cot. If you guys have a young puppy, purchase a cot that will fit your dog when it's grown, not now as a puppy. So if you got this little lab puppy, but his mom and dad happen to be about 80 pounds and about this high, you want to make sure you purchase a large cot. Uh, if you have any questions on all these, just of course contact us. And you can always contact me at Brian with a Y at TameTheWild.com. But we'll make sure that you get the right size cot for your dog. All right, now the other piece of equipment that I'm going to recommend is, let me move flat black here, is a mat. Now we use these mats here. Okay, because why? The mat becomes my mobile 
place, mobile place. So now moving my cot out of the way, soon we train the dog after it has learned the concept of not leaving a spot and not leaving an apparatus. Then we take our mat and that becomes place. So now all of a sudden I tell the dog, place, bingo, right there on that mat. And guys, taking this mat with you is a whole lot easier than taking that cot. Comes in a nice little duffel bag, just throw it in there like a little miniature sleeping bag. And next thing you know, you can take this to your child's soccer game and have your dog do place. Take it to the bridge club. If you play bridge, anywhere, just imagine anywhere. Take portable place with you. Okay, and then uh, as far as optional equipment goes, let me lay that down. Uh, these are called slip leashes. Now again, here's my slip collar. Pull on leash, dog pulls, it grabs. This kind of does the entire thing in a leash, meaning it goes around the dog's head just like you would, form that letter P, face your dog, slide it on, and then once you do, there's a leather tab, and you pull that up until you have that right length of play, that inch and a half, just like you would your slip collar. And now you have a leash and slip collar all in one tool. We use these all the time here as well, especially if we're in a hurry with the dog, it's easy to slide over the dog's head. If they're in beginning training, uh, we'll usually use the slip collar, and then towards the end, we're kind of just proofing out or maybe transitioning to off-leash training, we'll go with a slip leash. Now, they come in different sizes. This one's a little thinner, it's a 3 8 inch, and the other one is my good old half inch, and uh, it plays the same way. It slides over the dog's head. It's just a thicker leash, so for you guys especially, Big hands, big dog, you probably want a big slip leash. Uh, those of you that have a smaller dog, smaller hands, go with the smaller diameter slip leash. Okay guys, that's it. That's gonna wrap up this video. Again, you can buy all this equipment and more at shoptamingthewild.com. All right, stay tuned because now, here we go. We're going to start training, we're going to start telling you what we do, and we're going to be ready to roll right into training and show you how to use all of this equipment. All right, Flat Black, you did good, buddy. Okay, guys, I'll see you in the next video.